What's up, everyone? Today, let's talk about this light graph in Cambridge Art Seventeen. I believe you guys already know how to describe upward and downward trends. So today's video will be focusing more on how to make comparisons. I mean, how to compare these two lights. So this light shows the number of shops that opened, and this one shows the number of shops that closed. Let's start with the overview paragraph. So for a light graph, of course, we will describe the general trends. Please don't say something like overall they both declined. I wouldn't call these downward trends. Obviously, they fluctuated, and the fluctuations are pretty big. So I would just say that overall, the number of shops that closed and the number that opened both saw large fluctuations during the specified period of time. Please note how I used the word "both." You could also use it this way: both the number of shops that closed and the number that opened saw large fluctuations. But it's actually better to use both to modify the verb "saw." This is because here we have a long subject. The word "both" unambiguously signals the boundary between the subject and its verb, making the sentence much easier to read. Anyways, both versions are correct, although the first one is better. However, you shouldn't write it like this. Both the number of shops that closed and the doors that opened saw large fluctuations. The word "both" is used to introduce a set of parallel elements, but they are not parallel. The first is number of shops. The second is doors, which refers to shops. For the structure to be parallel, we need something equivalent to number, not something equivalent to shops. The use of those also fails because it doesn't match saw large fluctuations. The shops didn't see fluctuations; the number did. That's why I repeated the word number. Please also note that here we can omit shops, and it's actually better to omit it. We don't need to say the number of shops that opened. We can omit shops and just say the number that opened. Here's another example: the proportion of people using the internet for work went up, while the proportion of people using it for study went down. It's better not to use that here because it's far from its referent proportion. We can omit people and just say the proportion using it for study. Now let's finish the overview. Apart from the trends, are there any general comparisons we can make? If you look at the whole picture instead of the single data points, you will find that there are more closings than openings every year, except for 2011 and 2015. However, closings outpaced openings in all years except for 2011 and 2015. Here, you can use except for 2011 and 2015. Except in 2011 and 2015, or except 2011 and 2015, they are all correct. This is the entire overview paragraph. Now, details paragraph one. Perhaps you are thinking about mixing these two lines together, describing this part of the two lines in details paragraph one and the other part in details paragraph two. Perhaps you are thinking this way. You can make a lot of comparisons. Let's see if it's a good idea to group information this way. In 2011, there were about 8,500 store openings, compared with around 6,500 closings. Openings then dropped to 4,000 in 2012, before increasing to just over 6,000 in 2014. In comparison, the number of closings declined to 6,000 in 2012, after which it rose to the highest level in 2013 at just over 7,000. However, it then fell again to roughly the same level as the number of openings in 2014 at around 6,500. If you think about it from the perspective of a reader, this version isn't very good because it's not easy to follow. It first talks about openings and then closings, and then goes back to talk about openings again, and then switches to closings. Even if readers are not confused at this point, they probably will be when they read the second details paragraph, where you continue to switch between openings and closings. You don't want to confuse your examiner, do you? 
The other problem with this version is that it repeats openings and closings again and again. If we separate openings and closings into two different paragraphs, then we can use the pronouns to refer to the openings or closings already mentioned without causing any confusion because there is only one item in each paragraph. And describing openings and closings in two different paragraphs doesn't mean that we don't compare them. So in Dita's paragraph one, I will simply describe the trends of closings. I won't make any comparisons here. In Dita's paragraph two, I will describe the trends of openings, and I will also contrast the openings with closings. Let's start with closings. I'm not going to say that they decreased and then increased and then decreased again. How about we just say that they fluctuated? The number of shops that closed fluctuated between roughly 6,000 and 7,000 during the first four years of the period. Then we are better emphasizing that this is the lowest point, after which it fell sharply to its lowest number, about 600 in 2015. Please note the use of after which. Note how I used it to link the two clauses. Next, I will say it increased and then remained relatively unchanged. However, this number rose significantly to approximately 5,000 the following year and stayed at this level until the end of the period. Please note that stayed at this level doesn't mean the number stayed completely unchanged. In this context, it means stayed at a level of approximately 5,000. So it's an accurate description of the trend. As you can see, by focusing on only closings, I was able to use it and this number to avoid repeating closings again and again. And you compare these two versions, which one is easier to follow? Of course, this one. Now let's move on to details paragraph 2, openings. I know you guys want to make comparisons. I know you guys want to say something like there were more openings than closings in 2011. I will show you an advanced way to do it. In 2011, around 8,500 shops opened, which resulted in 2,000 net openings. So how can we get the net openings? Of course, we need to compare openings with closings to get the number of net openings. That is to say, this clause compares openings with closings without mentioning the closings. How clever is that? And here, I will make a comparison again. After steep drop down to 4,000 in 2012, openings made a rebound, reaching nearly the same level as closings in 2014 at just over 6,000. This is a comparison with the closings. Next, I'm gonna say that the number decreased again and then remained stable and then decreased further. Please pay attention to the linking words I'm gonna use. This figure then dropped again to its 2012 level in 2015, where it remained until it decreased further to an all-time low at 3000 in 2018. Where it remained means it remained at its 2012 level. And remember, in details paragraph 1, we learned after which the number of shops that closed fluctuated during the first four years of the period after which it fell sharply to its lowest number. After which can also be used here to link the two clauses. After which it leveled off for two years until it decreased further to an all-time low. I also want to talk about the use of the verb further. It conveys two meanings. It fell again, and it fell below the low point previously mentioned. This paragraph is also done. Finally, the introductory paragraph this paragraph should be a paraphrase of the introductory text of the light graph. I will just use the title of the graph to paraphrase it. So sharp closures and openings could mean the number or rate of sharp closures and openings. The title specifically says the number of closures and openings because it needs to make it clear that the y-axis shows the number of closures and openings and not the rate of the closures and openings. Therefore, it's better not to just say the graph shows store closures and openings. We are better keeping the word number. 
The light graph displays the number of store closings and openings in a single country between the years of 2011 and 2018. Closings is American English, whereas closures is British English. You should choose only one to use in your essay. Here's the entire essay. I really recommend separating the two lines into two different paragraphs. Your essay will be much easier to follow if you write it this way. Keep your details paragraph one simple. Just let it be a pure description of the trends of one of the lines. If you want to compare the two lines, you can compare them in details paragraph two. And remember, you don't need to make a ton of comparisons. The question asks us to make comparisons where relevant. In fact, if you make too many comparisons, your essay will become messy. That's all for this video. If you are interested in learning how to describe trends, go ahead and check out this video in which I show you five different ways to describe trends. Thanks for watching. Bye.